All right, so I got it all sorted out. I was able to log in and um, get the uh, get multiple searches already set up, so we're not going to worry about that. Just not going to click anything, just to you know. Again, it's very finicky, but it gives us accurate, pretty accurate data. Um, you know, it's, it's very good. So what we're going to see is this fire pit. So we kind of stumbled upon this niche, you know, just through doing other research. We, um, let me show this tab up here. So we were, um, we ended up doing market research on fire pits and then we found that there was Starfire Direct. I'm not affiliated with this brand. It's just a great example of a drop shipping store. Perhaps they do some manufacturing, but they have uh, some brands that were drop shipped. We were able to find uh, the Bromic brand, their website uh, here, right? So we were able to locate kind of who they are as a manufacturer. So we have Fire Pit. Uh, let me go back. Okay, so we we're in this niche. We've kind of done some research. We ended the, the last section on that. So now we're going to go into the requirement of five to 20,000 searches per month for the main product. So we want um, an example of something that the main product has at least 5,000 searches per month. In this case, we can see that it has 90,000 searches per month for the main uh, keyword. We're also going to learn some basic details. For example, uh, they have a KD percentage. I believe that's like the difficulty level that they consider. Right. So they have like hard or difficult or, you know, this is kind of their... Uh, perception of whether it will be difficult to, to get into that market. Uh, a lot of their uh, perception is based on organic traffic, like amount of backlinks and amount of articles submitted. So uh, this is a good idea of kind of the general broad uh, competition in this niche. It doesn't necessarily mean that this is going to be uh, accurate 100% because we're really going off of the Google Shopping and the uh, different shopping campaigns. So we're not, uh, eventually we want to break into and have good uh, SEO and, and great um, kind of uh, great results in the SERPs, but in a search, uh, great results in the SERPs meaning like being uh, in the one, two, or three, three spot, preferably in the first spot in the search engine results or the SERPs. So uh, eventually we want to get to that point, um, but still right now we, we just want to kind of get just make sure the market is broad enough. So there's enough search terms, there's enough people looking for these products, and we just wanna make sure that we're not, because remember that we're building a foundation. That's again why this is called the best part, because we're building this foundation uh, which the entire business and operations will be based on. So we wanna make sure that if we're building something that people are gonna come and spend their hard-earned money, we wanna make sure that it is a quality marketplace, that there's enough people searching for this product in order to justify us putting in the time, effort, energy, and, and we have already, we will know whether or not this is a good place to get into just based on how many searches there are. So we have uh, the average CPC. This might be, I don't know if they're using um, uh, paid ads as far as like, uh, you know, keyword, like search terms, or if they're using shopping in this, in this example. But either way, it gives us some kind of concept about what we might expect. Uh, for a high level you know campaign uh, this is cost per click meaning how much uh, you are paying in order to get one person to click on your ad this isn't necessarily accurate this is pr more than likely uh, for search which is something that you set up much later on uh, after the shopping campaigns so we have uh, what is this category okay SERPs yeah this is what I mentioned before this is just, I guess, some ranking system, how many search results there are, and then when it was updated. So we're get some good information. So really all we're trying to do is just check off this box, right? Is there 20,000? Good, okay, we have 20,000. And then I, I pulled up a few other searches. So earlier we're looking at telescope. Oh, one other thing I wanna point out before we move on is this intent. This actually is quite interesting. This tells you kind of what intent Google assumes that this search result is related to. For example, they uh, see like this would assume a commercial intent, meaning the person is interested to buy a fire pit, um, where uh, maybe this type of search term is more related to like navigational or transaction, also kind of commercial intent. 
Fire Pit Ideas is more informational. And so they kind of segment out this. So this is a good idea. What we like to see is something like this, like lots of commercial intent, because uh, we're trying to sell these high ticket products, right? So Telescope, this is an example of something that has some commercial intent for the, the main keyword, but we have a lot of search terms that are not necessarily you know commercial intent or perhaps informational, but what I, again, see there's lots of, you know, they consider it very hard, but one thing I do like is the amount of search traffic, right? So again, we hit that basic figure of uh, uh, at least five to 20,000. So these are great high level kind of industry things. The base term they consider to have commercial intent as well. We can look through the, the cost per click. Now the cost per click is really gonna be related to the gross profit or the profit per item sold. So, um, you know, you'd expect the CPC to range wildly depending on the marketplace that you're in. Um, it's not really a set standard. And again, this is probably uh, search terms related to uh, a keyword campaign or search campaign, not a shopping campaign. So there are some slight differences within Google Ads, which will be taught in the uh, third and fourth phases on how to actually scale the website once it's created. So we have Telescope. Again, it meets the basic criteria, 110, uh, 110,000 for the basic search result. Chandelier, uh, again, we're looking at Okay, so they say chandelier is more of an in, informational, and but then we have a lot of commercial intent in all these other types of chandeliers. Light, lyr uh, lyrics, that's interesting. Chandelier, that's by the uh, song, yeah, Sia. Then chandeliers, crystal chandelier. We can see that all of these are over 5,000. So at least we have enough commercial intent to justify a market. So it looks like we could get involved here. You know, the chandelier is not so bad. Uh, as maybe my first in, uh, inspection, it didn't seem like it was that great of a market. There wasn't, but there were a lot of high ticket products. And so we do have a lot of chandelier sales. So this is a good indication of, of people's kind of uh, intent on what they're looking for. Especially this is a lot of specific items. So yeah, it could be a good market. Uh, this is a market that I'm going to be uh, following you, that you're going to be following me rather step by step on uh, building the site under. It's going to be a treadmill based site. So uh, it's also going to sell, you know, uh, health and fitness equipment like uh, exercise bikes and other things like that. So you can see this one does have a, a huge uh, amount of search traffic, considered very hard. You can see the cost per click is quite high on this one, um, you know, according to just the search term treadmill. Uh, and again, there's different types of commercial intent, treadmill for sale, transactional, uh, some name brands here under the desk treadmill. So uh, this is something that I'm going to be getting into. Uh, this is a, and then I just learned something. I never thought about a dog treadmill uh, or I have seen under desk treadmills, but they're, even within the treadmill niche, there could be very uh, interesting product categories. Well, wow, what a funny image is a dog on a treadmill. I, I, maybe I've, Maybe that's common to some people, but I've, I've never seen that before. Dog treadmill. So that could be perhaps a marketplace in itself, but this is how I'm, you know, like I'm learning, oh, there's a such thing as a dog treadmill. Like, let me go and just see, you know, what that looks like. And I'm, I'm, I'm doing market research, right? So I'm thinking, oh, okay, they're, they're kind of lower ticket, but there are some expensive ones here. But this is how I'm, you know, operating in the beginning. What I'm doing is, okay, they're kind of below mid-ticket. It's not like they're more low-ticket, but they, they could be. Yeah, they're right around that price point. I don't really want to get in the $300 range. It's just not really good. $750 is kind of where I want to draw the line at. Now, if it's like real close, but yeah, these ones are probably too cheap. But there are some expensive ones. I don't know. It's an interesting market. Dog treadmills. It's a wonderful world we live in. So this is what I'm doing. This is how I'm going off on tangents. I'm coming back to my main thing. And then I'm always, I'm just looking at things that are expensive or new markets I've never heard of and just doing some basic research. And I'm checking the, um, the product advertising, the PLAs, and I'm seeing, you know, okay, what is, uh, what is a market like? What are other people selling? Remember, everyone who's placed their listing in here, they're paying for you to click on their product. So they're not gonna be paying. This is actively people who are actively promoting their stuff in Google. So they're not gonna be you know, doing this unless it's products that are being sold actively. So um, let's, let's go into um, 
doing the market research. So we've gone a deep dive into SEM Rush. I've shown you a few examples. I'm not going to search too many things because eventually SEM Rush is going to kick you out. It's so finicky. So you want to sign up for the free trial or just use those 10 you know options per day. Uh, and then you want to also look for complementary categories. So if you you should have a list of between 30 to 40 or a significant amount of different ideas. I mean, heck, I gave you a list of like 20 or 15 right here. So, or however many that is. So you can just add onto that list and, or just even just start there and then use that as a basis for uh, spiraling into other categories or, or uh, shooting off into other, other different product categories. So now we're going to go into uh, a deeper dive into the Google Shopping PLAs. So we're going to, We've learned, okay, um, we have an idea of a market. We've done preliminary research. We've seen the trend. We've seen which search terms yield kind of the largest market. Then we've gone into SEM rush. We've determined that there is between five and 20,000 searches per month. We have an idea of like a, a person or an avatar who would kind of purchase these type of products. It doesn't have to be a deep uh, kind of, you know, really really core but just some high level basic features that might pertain to the person who wants to buy these products stereotypes are okay you know just what you think about this person like is are they this type of person or that type of person and a few points on that we always want to go after upper middle class or more wealthy individuals you know we're selling products that range between 700 upwards of thousands of dollars we're probably not going to sell those to people who are in a lower cost demo, you know a, a lower kind of income demographic lower income bracket so we want to appeal to people who are what you would consider uh, is you know maybe not ultra wealthy but well off right at least let's say between two to four thousand dollars of monthly disposable income so after their bills are paid things they just spend money on whether it be food or gadgets or gizmos or toys or things that they just invest in you know a lot of these things is they're purchasing a physical product this thing has a resale value so it has some intrinsic value just for being the thing itself so a lot of people uh, will like to buy things and then keep them in good condition and then perhaps later resell them. So we want to appeal to that kind of person uh, who just has the cash available to just make purchases based on the things that are going on in their life at this time. So you may or may not be in that category. It doesn't really matter if you're struggling to get by that you can be aware, right, that there are people that exist in the world that just shop and just buy stuff and don't really consider the price. They're not heavy price conscious. We want to provide value to those people who are shopping based on just what they want and need. For example, um, I have a friend of mine who's really interested in saunas. And so he's looking at buying a sauna. It's a really hot item these days. It's very popular. And uh, he just decided, you know, after maybe sitting on the idea for a month or two, hey, I'm going to buy a sauna. I know kind of what I want, red cedar, uh, the, the kind of highest level. He went out, he did some quick research online, figured out the best uh, company that had the sauna, and then he bought through a store. And he was able to get a good deal on it uh, because they were drop shipping it, so they were able to offer him a better bundle than the manufacturer directly. Uh, and it was a no-brainer to just buy it through this other company. They ca it came with, like, all the... All, all the um, things for the sauna like the the water bucket even the mitts the hat you know if you want to get it really hot there's like a lot of little things you know that the thermometer so all that stuff comes included they even did white club white glove service and they come in and they install it for you and set it up and everything so it's like a, a no-brainer for him to he just wanted it he just went out and bought and bought it he just found the best one found the best offer and just took, took action within just a short period of time there are people like that they're people that just take action based on things they want. Um, and their ability, their purchasing power could be greater, you know, could be in a, in a higher level than where you are currently. You're able to sell to those people and get a percentage. So we don't want to target really middle class or kind of lower middle class. We want to focus on kind of upper middle class and even, you know, wealthy, depending on how you, you justify it, could be. You know, I'm probably talking two to five thousand dollars of disposable income monthly uh, would be a good kind of starting point. Uh, also, with seasonality, another thing of kind of considering when you're getting into the niche is if this product is seasonal, 
um, like some of the examples we saw before, like swimming pools we went through. You want to only get into that niche if you're getting into the season. So if we're about to start the summer, okay, great. That you know, or if we're maybe we're in February or March and you have a few months to get everything organized and get all, all your ducks in a row, you know, it's going to take you know, it takes a few weeks to get your site up, built, branded, social media account set up, built up, branded, and, and to um, actually start uploading all the products and, and getting everything kind of organized. So this takes some time uh, to get everything kind of done. So you want to make sure that you give yourself at least maybe a month or two before the season starts at minimum if, if you're really kind of going hard to get everything set up and uh, managed properly. Now, uh, so you want an annual product, you have more flexibility, right? You can kind of get into it any time of the year, but seasonal, because you want to start seeing results in the beginning and then, and then capitalize on those results. And there's a few techniques for kind of turning a seasonal business into an annual business, which I will show later kind of through your brand recognition. Um, this is a kind of interesting thing that I've done with one of my uh, summer sites is I've made it uh, less seasonal by offering other products that... Uh, might peak at different times of the year, but are also sold to the same type of uh, person or, or customer avatar. So this is um, the basic ideas about research. And now we're going to get into, uh, there's a few points, I rewatched the videos and there was a few points that I wanted to harp on that I didn't really dig in deep previously. So uh, that's really valuable. I hope you, you listened to the last uh, 15, I don't know, maybe the last uh, five minutes or so. It's really important data. Anyway, we're going to go into the uh, additional market data. So now we're going to get into uh, more research on uh, whether they're dropship friendly and the competitors in the space. So <clears throat> to do that, I have some tools for you. So we have, um, let me pull up the first tool. Okay, let's start here. So this is uh, the beginning tool that I want you to use. Okay, here we go. So we have our product idea. So let's just say right now we're doing some research. We have telescopes, we have chandeliers, we have fire pits, we had swimming pools before, and then treadmills was the one that I'm focusing on. I've, done, I've already done a bit of this research and I, I'm also showing you, I just wanted to show you at least like f three, four, five examples because so many people will say, oh, I've been interested in e-commerce for years and and I've, you know, I, I, but I can't decide what niche I want to get into or how do I, so many people just stop at that point. And I just want to really break down all these preconceptions about the difficulty of deciding a niche. I mean, it's an hour long process at best to make it just look, do basic research, figure out some basic details, think if you're interested in it, if it makes sense, and then just jump in both feet. This isn't uh, one foot out, one foot in. You've already taken you know, all this information this far. Just pick one. Find one that makes sense, it seems like it's good, and jump in. The worst case scenario is you learn something. The best case scenario is it's a rock star and it takes off. So you either learn something or it takes off and becomes super successful and then you earn your first million dollars online or your second million dollars online. Uh, I think it's worth it. So let's just get into how to pick up uh, the niche. I'm a little bit harsh, but only because I want you to succeed. I generally am not very harsh at all. I'm very easygoing. I just want to make sure that you don't have these preconceived notions about what's possible because anything is possible. And this is a particular system which has been replicated many times and has brought uh, financial success and independence to many people. So with that being said, Let's get into the product categories. So we have our product categories. We have, we, are, we did this research in the last, we probably could have filled out this document, but we let's just throw it in there. It was averaged about, uh, what was it, like 800, like 500 to $800 roughly, something like that. Um, chandeliers, they were between like 1200 to 1800 I think, something like that we looked at. The fire pits, they were between like 2000 to 5000 we just looked at. Swimming pools, they were crazy expensive, anywhere from 2000 to up somewhere 10000 let's just say 8000 to be, you know, conservative. And treadmills, they run about 1200 bucks to about, I don't know, $2,500, roughly. So, we, I'm just 
pulling this from the research we did in the last video. I don't remember the exact figures, but I'm just giving myself kind of a rough estimate. So all of these are at least uh, $700, which is okay. Uh, the average, rather. The telescopes could be on a little bit on the low side. They had a few high ticket items, but they were mostly bundled. So was were telescopes seasonal? I don't believe so. We'd have to go back and check on the Google Trends. So you can do that. You know, We've already shown that in the previous video. If they're brand loyal, we've discussed that uh, deeply. Uh, dropship friendly, we've already gone into that. So you want to just check yes or no, check yes or no. SEM rush, we're able to determine whether it's 5,000 or you know, just put the kind of number of searches. So this is one that I can uh, do right here. Let me pull it up if I still have that tab. Yeah, here we go. So telescope, we're gonna put 110K, 110K searches per month. Let's do fire pit. We have 90,000, 90,000, 90,000 K, 90 K. We'll change it just to be accurate. It doesn't really matter because this is just product category. It's not keyword, but just to uh, help out a little bit. Let's see, chandelier we have, oh, we just did chandelier. No, chandelier is also 90k. And then treadmill, let's see, do we have treadmill still? That's 246k. So I'm not doing treadmills because the big market is a big market. I'm doing it primarily because I want a, a product that sells in the winter. I'm looking for something, and this is just something I'm also interested in. I'm very interested in health and fitness, uh, and I have some... Um, interested in learning about treadmills and different physical equipment and the different types of products that are related the different brands I just am interested in learning about treadmills and 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 uh, like electrical bikes and uh, electric um, recumbent bikes and upright bikes and which one's best for you and I'm just gonna be doing this kind of health and fitness to kind of uh, do a home gym so I would also want to learn about the industry and so it's just a, a entryway point into this health and fitness niche and I know that this product is already selling so I'm just giving you some background data on my thought process. You might look at this and say, oh, well, it's just the search volume. It's not. It's a whole bunch of different factors that we've already gone through. So I, But I will do the rest of the research based on that. So average competitors. So we're going to go into, now we're getting into the ba -ba -ba here, list 15 to 25 manufacturers, one to six competitors. And then we've already determined the search volume, and then we're doing additional market data. So we're kind of in the last step of market research. We're funneling down from our major list, and then we're going down, 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 until we figure out the one that we want to really get into that has three or four complementary niches that kind of appeal to the same marketplace or the same type of person. Uh, and this is important because we're going to build a brand, and that brand is going to be kind of focusing on that type of person. There's an example in marketing um, as a, a, a side note here where if you uh, if there's a crowd of people and you scream uh, some just hey no one maybe someone close to you will turn around but most people just keep moving but if you say hey Jim then like a lot of like Jim is gonna look and then all the people are gonna look at Jim and then there's gonna be a moment Right, So when we're doing our marketing to kind of uh, expand on that metaphor, we want to talk to one person. It's going to draw the attention of others and they're going to be uh, open to that. But we want to focus on who is our one type of person. It doesn't have to be whether they're male or female. It could be more of the mindset of this individual. For example, uh, you know, fitness. Okay, a person who's interested in fitness. Okay, what type of people are interested in fitness? When you look around, what are their lives like? What are their activities like? They're more kind of um, go-getter personalities. They want, they generally have higher energy. These are just the benefits of exercise, right? So it doesn't have to be very deep. We're just kind of doing a broad stroke about what this type of marketplace is. I don't want to be a dead horse, but a lot of people talk about how they struggle just generally speaking, in deciding a niche. So um, I, I want to demystify it for you and break it down in a really simple and easy to digest way. So we're going to do into the PLAs now. So let's make sure we're in the right tab. We got to do an incognito one here. Okay. So I'm going to do um, treadmill, I think would be a good one. 
give this a second to load. We got our captchas here. Again, I'm just I'm abroad right now while I'm recording this training, um, and so I'm using a VPN and and a inc and um, incognito tabs is the best way to uh, get this. Oh, it was, it was stairs, wasn't it? Okay, let me just do this. How many times do people get caught in these? Like, uh, here we go. Okay. Sometimes they get very complicated. These captures. All right. So we have treadmill. Now we're going to do the high level, the kind of last market research, uh, based on you know which one do I really want to get into? And you can use this uh, spreadsheet here, and you don't have to fill out every box right for every product right. It's just a tool that allows you to aggregate all of your research. So because sometimes what will happen is you'll do research, you'll say, oh, this is a good one. And then you close the tab, you go on to your life and you come back to it later and you say, oh, what was that site? Well, I don't know. I didn't save it or where was it? So this is just a tool that you can use in order to aggregate all of your data while you're doing your research. So we're going to look at average, uh, average number of competitors and we're going to look at average number of suppliers. And then we're going to input just a one or two or three or four examples of competitors and then just a few examples of suppliers. So we're just going to kind of get some real basic high level input of, of who we could possibly work with and then who is already in the marketplace. Now we're going to start with competitors because generally we're going to find our suppliers from the competitors. And so we're going to use um, maybe fire pits is better because we already have that one site. Yeah, let's do fire pits. So I'm going to close this out. Okay, so let's change this to fire pit. So we're going to go to the shopping tab. And we can see the Starfire Direct brand, they're going really, they're promoting heavily. So they're going to be our first uh, competitor. Let's see. What was that with Starfire? Starfire Designs, yeah. Here's the website. All right, great. So we're going to have them. And we're going to put them here. Uh, fire Pit. Okay, great. So I'm just recording a competitor. And then let's go back. Okay. So Whetstone Design, Titan Great Out. Oh, it's a lower ticket product. Let's skip over that one. Whetstone Design. This is interesting. Let's check out that. Solo Stove. That's kind of low ticket. Starfire Direct. Brio. So I'm looking at the different vendors, right? I'm looking at competitors. And we have some more lower ticket things here. So... We don't have a lot of high ticket examples of, co of competition. Let's see if we can find one. This is a good one. I think this could be a good competitor. In that backyard niche, right? Yeah. So we're just going to do some basic research. And then, but I want to find a better one. Let's find a better one. Let's not do fire pits. Let's do treadmills. Sorry, I'm going back and forth because I want to find a great example of, oh, this is, oh, this is better. Yeah, let's do this one. Okay. So we'll close out on fire pits. We're going to move on to a different one. But this is uh, very interesting. Again, patio furniture, right? So we're seeing a trend here for the fire pit niche. And I might be doing research like this as I'm going through. I might be looking at a few different niches like, oh, what about that one? How are they doing it? How are they doing it? So I might, while I'm doing that research, I'll probably just hop in here and I will just put this under the fire pit tab as well for competitors. So because the thing is that later I might want to come back to this niche and boom, I have all the research I need right here, right? So it's just kind of saving the data. Uh, let's go back, but we're going to go on the treadmills for now because it's a good indicate. It's a good uh, kind of heavy competition market, um, so it's easy for me to show you the examples of co a competition and how to read the PLAs, how to read these um, these search results in a way that's going to make you more money. So, first of all, I'm looking at 
how much competition is there for a specific product? So in the treadmill space, there's a few kind of well-known brands. You have like Peloton, Nordic Track, Xterra, but you have a ton of products which are unbranded, right? There's tons of treadmills, even nice ones on brands that you would never have heard of uh, that people would sell. Like, uh, let's, let's go down. Proform is a brand. Um, we have the Bowflex is a brand. Maybe you've heard of Bowflex. They used to do a lot of TV commercials. We have a lot of different, like a lot of people want these lower ticket ones, but you have like Caseboards, Xterra, I don't know, Woodway, some of them are low ticket, some are high ticket. So we have a lot of different options for treadmills, right? Super fit, um, you know, there's just Go Plus, you know, Sunny Health and Fitness, all these different brands. So there are different brands that sell different products. So you might have the Nordic Track Commercial 1750, right? Well, uh, just for example, you might also have like a um, PlayStation 5, blah, blah, blah. Some specific, or that's not an example. Uh, you might have a, it says you have a brand, you have a product, and then you have what's called the SKU. So S-K-U. That is the kind of, uh, I don't know what the actual acronym is, but it's just a code or a, some sort of, yeah, code that references the individual product. So you have one SKU would be one product. If you have different variants of that product, so you have a blue one, a black one, a yellow one, a purple one, then those would all be different SKUs. Every color would be a different SKU. So the purple one would be one SKU, blue one would be one SKU, even though it's the same product, different colors. So even variants would have their own SKU. So with this Nordic, we're gonna pick this product, this Nordic Track Commercial 1750 uh, treadmill. What we're gonna see is that, look, Johnson Johnson's selling it here, Nordic Track is selling it here. And we have, perhaps, if I typed it in here, I would see even more search results for that one treadmill. And w what I can do here is to pick a different SKU, the Nordic Track Commercial 2950 I can see that there are three stores selling that product. So if I click here, I'll see, oh, there's some people that are selling the product that are the same. So in this case, we have Online Sports Mall, they're selling it for twenty eight one one ninety. Uh, this is like the probably uh, before tax or after tax. So this is the item price, and they're estimating tax. This is the price estimating tax, pro estimating tax, yeah. And then another shop selling it for this price. Probably this is not a real store, right? So I know if I come in here and if I resell these products, I'm going to eat these guys lunch, but because I, I can just see based on their listing. But also, it's going to give me a great uh, competitor boom look at this we have another site online sports mall and let's see how they're how they're optimizing treadmills so they're selling again these are people who are actively advertising so this person is advertising right now for their for that product but look they're selling low ticket stuff high ticket stuff and they're not really dialed in on treadmills they're, they are selling many many different product categories and I would avoid working like this because what happens is you have all these low ticket products and all these high ticket products and then it becomes very difficult to manage the profitability of the site because you're spending uh, money on products that are uh, $5 profit but also products that are you know a $2,000 profit like which one would you rather spend a dollar for if it's the $2,000 product then you'd be right it's better so we don't want to really waste too much ad spend on selling a whole bunch of low ticket products which you know each cust so would you rather for example if you wanted to make a thousand dollars and you could have one customer uh, and just manage their ex expectations and make sure they get their fulfillment properly and, and, and well done or would you rather manage let's say a hundred customers and have to make sure that all their stuff gets well done one is probably much easier to make a thousand dollars right so that's the benefit of high ticket is you have less uh, customer service, you have less uh, issues, you have less claims, less problems, and there's more profit, uh, really directly translating into just less work overall. So these are some of the benefits of the high ticket dropshipping, of dropshipping high ticket products. So we have this site, this is a uh, sports site, we can see that, you know, even their links aren't good. So you guys can just see an example of how, like, easy it is to come in and just if you're managing a business you can just take over a niche because most people don't know what they're doing 
they don't have any idea on how to run these things properly. So they're just throwing stuff up here, they're hoping it sticks. Um, and so we can see here that there's all these different popular products and we have multiple stores who are selling them. Now, the, I don't like to see, let's say more than, um, if I click on any one product, if I looked on a, a niche and I went here and it was 20 plus, 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 I might really avoid that market because there's just so much competition, right? But if in this case, okay, we have some products that are selling with multiple you know, stores, uh, but the prices are all over the place. So it doesn't really you know, give me a, a, a really good indication about uh, whether the product would be uh, good or, or not. Um, so this one I can see we have like some nationwide brands um, and they are all showing, but this is a good representation of what could be a map policy. So map policy is, I'm just gonna add this here as a little additional. This is minimum advertised price. So what this means is that if a manufacturer is selling one of their products and you are reselling it, then you have to uh, stay at a minimum price point. So, or, or, or above a minimum price point. For example, if they say uh, you can sell our products, but uh, this particular SKU, the particular product, can only be sold at a minimum price of $800. That would mean that everybody in the market could only go to $800 and they can't sell it at $799. That would be against the MAT policy and they might um, kick, get, remove your vendor account or they'll definitely send you an email saying, hey, you're, you're under the MAT, you gotta bring your, your prices up. Now this doesn't mean that you can't offer a promo on the site itself. It just means on your advertising that you could only advertise it um, in the PLAs here, um, you know, at that rate. Now there are some secret tools and tricks to get a promo in the PLAs, which is crazy that you look at these ads and no one's doing it right now. Uh, on Labor Day weekend, no one is offering any Labor Day promos at all in their in their searches. It's just another indication of of, of how you can come in here and take over any niche with this infer with this training. All right, so we've gone into a lot of different things. So we've also, uh, so we found some competitors. So I would, you know, make a list of those. Let's go back. So this would be one. Uh, let's see, treadmills, here we are, so competitors. Okay, so I'm just gonna list it there. Let's find a few other ones. Now I'm looking for other people, because I, I remember I'm looking for drop ship friendly. So I'm looking for stores that are have you know total body experts, stuff like that. SB fitness equipment, kind of name brands, total body experts, I already got that one. Get fit cardio. So I'm just looking at different brands. Oh, look at that, maybe a retargeting campaign for a dog treadmill. Nord track. I don't want to go directly to the manufacturer yet. I'm, I mean, I could, but what I really want to do is I want to find other companies that are kind of drop shipping or selling like like a site like this. Again, you'll see the, the style. So I'm going to put this here. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to put it, um, get it, put a little dash here to separate them. And this is, you know, you might have a notepad file, right? You might have, you know, some other way of, of uh, organizing this. But I just, you know, I'm just gonna, oh man, let's see. Okay, so I'm just gonna have it just in the Excel file or probably open another tab or something, or put it in a notepad file because it seems like it's going crazy. The, the links are too long. So you can have a separate notepad file, and, but you wanna store this data. You definitely wanna have access to it. So let's just do a deeper dive into this. So. We have this guy, we kind of, now here's what I wanted to get at. Oh, this is a great example of what I was talking about previously. Again, this is the first time I've seen this store. I've never seen this storefront, but it was a perfect example of what I was talking about. And I can see some of the things here that these people are trying to do. So you see they're selling treadmills, ellipticals, stair masters, uh, probably like used equipment or something, demo equipment, right? Strength equipment, rehab equipment, exercise bikes, strength packages, rowers. So you can see their product categories and who are they selling towards? 
They're selling to people interested in fitness. And guess what? Look, they also have commercial fitness. So they're also interested in, in supplying to gyms. Exactly what I was talking about. This would be a great competitor. Because what I'm going to learn is how to find manufacturers that drop ship. So this guy right here, I can tell, uh, let's do the basic research just so you can get on the level that I'm talking about. We're going to go down to the About Us page. And what we're going to find is there's no physical location. Even here, you see don't, you know, no physical location here. It's probably something about their goals, their mission, their ethics. Uh, they do have a corporate headquarters. I'm sure it's, you know, a suite. I don't think they're shipping directly. You have the, perhaps trainer or a coach maybe they own a gym or something like that but they're not making these products at their warehouse they're shipping from someone else uh, we can go delivery questionnaire mm -hmm. we're just doing research we're just checking oh this is uh, maybe something different I'm not sure what that's about let's go to uh, delivery question isn't that what I just did Ah, uh, this is like for delivery. They want to know for the white glove if you have a stairs or some issue for them to deliver. Um, I want to get into, usually they are required to have their shipping and return policy on the website. Maybe this would be it? Hmm. Maybe they got around that. That's usually a requirement from your merchant processing, from your credit card processing, that you have some sort of... Uh, Perhaps they have it on the About Us. Either way, we can easily identify that this store is not a manufacturer, right? So it's a, they're selling. They're focused on sales. They're trying to sell you different stuff. They have a phone number. So you could even, if you really wanted to dig super deep, you could even call this number and say, hey, do you guys ship from your warehouse or where do you ship from? If you really wanted to dig deep. But in the, I, I obviously that you can tell. Um, that this is a dropship store, and here's some in additional indications. When you look under treadmills, you'll notice they have it broken down by brand. Cybex, Stairmaster, Star Trek, Precker, Life Fitness, Matrix, Woodway, and so forth, right? And then they're, they're working with these brand names. So, what does that tell me? Oh, these brand names are willing to dropship. Great. Okay. So, I'm going to go to Cybex. So, we can see they don't offer their pricing. They, have some odd way of, oh, man. When I see these people and the way they organize things, it's just, it's crazy to me because you can come in here and eat their lunch. I keep saying it, but it's just shocking. A lot of people are advertising, but they're not uh, doing it so well. But what we found is a, a, a brand. So Cybex Online. Oh, they sell, this is interesting, car seats and strollers, but they also sell treadmills I suppose let's look probably under home and living no oh, sport I guess oh this is all car seat stuff maybe it's a different brand let's go back let's do um, Cybex treadmill mm -hmm. oh it looks like that is a are Cybex and Life Fitness. So it looks like that Cybex is a brand of Life Fitness. So we also saw Life Fitness on that store, right? Uh, let me go back. Yeah. So this one, they also have Life Fitness here. So we can see Cybex and Life Fitness, that they're kind of uh, maybe partner brands or one brand owns the other brand. Maybe they, they have different niche ca use cases. So we're going to go here and then boom. All right. So this will be one example of a brand that I want to reach out to. So I'm going to put that here. And I'm only going to do one or two or three because we just want to have some basis. And let's say we're researching like five or six, you know, different um, industries. I'm putting this under the URL for a few suppliers. So we want to re we're reaching out to like different industries. Um, and we're trying to find like a lot of different options, right? We're, in the beginning, we have all these different things like 20, 20, 30. We're trying to like dial it in, dial it in, dial it in, dial it in. And so as we get deeper and deeper into it, then we just want to list like a few of them. So we can pretty much, in this case, I've completed this document uh, because I put uh, a few competitors and then um, 
uh, oh, this should be average. No. <laughs> so these should be mixed and matched. We, uh, these should be switched. So the average competitor should be this category. The URL should be this category. Either way, the point is that we've had like uh, we have an average number of competitors. So let's just say for treadmills we had like three or five maybe was like kind of the most I saw. Uh, and then you can look and see you know this is the average number of competitors. So these two headlines. I'm just gonna do this real quick. To be better here. I don't want to change the platform. Here we go. Let's see, there was like three or so treadmills. We had like three to five. Actually, shouldn't fire pits did have like five to ten in some cases, right? Uh, we kind of decided that niche wasn't so good. <laughs> pre filled to May 10th. Let's just say. Uh, five. Oh man, this thing is going crazy on me. All right, so we'll ignore that for now. <laughs> so let's just work on what we have. So we have a supplier, and we have at least fifteen. So what we really want to identify is that there's at least fifteen different uh, companies that sell treadmills that could be open to drop shipping. So we have Cybex, Stairmaster. So these are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have eight different options right here. So this would be my starting point. And then I would do the same research for every market. So I would figure out Cybex. I would figure out uh, Life, Ma uh, Life Fitness. I'd figure out Stairmaster, Star Trek, uh, uh, Matrix, Woodway, Spirit Fitness. What is the other one? Lifespan. So I would get all of those and then I would move over. So I've, I've kind of figured out, okay, there's enough suppliers. Uh, we have some competition. So I have some indication that there are people advertising. I've checked in the PLAs. I've seen the trends of the market. At this point, I got a pretty good idea about treadmills or whatever market I've done this research on. Wouldn't you agree? You're pretty knowledgeable about this topic. So now we're gonna get into the next uh, sheet. This one we can close. I I finished that one and now we're going to get into our supplier research tracking sheet and so this is going to be um, once you have decided oh, decided your niche then you complete the supplier research tracking sheet now this is where we're actually going to list out the possible vendors that we want to work with. So we've identified that these vendors are dropship friendly. They're selling on other platforms in the example of uh, the treadmills. And we want to make a list of all the different vendors that sell these products. Because la later, uh, during phase three, I, yeah, during phase two or two, no, it's in phase two, we're going to be actually um, reaching out to suppliers and we're going to be getting them and we're going to be uh, working with them and reaching out to them. So you want to have some sheet or some database. You can use your own. This is just the one that I use. Uh, I'm going to go through it right now with you uh, in order to determine whether or not uh, this market is a good fit and if there aren't enough suppliers that justify that it's viable. So we're going to list out the supplier name, their website, phone number, email, uh, when we contacted it, and this will be filled in later, the name of the person we spoke with, uh, whether they're a diamond, ruby, or emerald level supplier. This is like your standard, uh, you know, platinum or gold, silver, copper, or diamond is going to be the highest level supplier. They might be a big brand in the industry, for example, Life Fitness or Peloton. These are the ones that you really want to get signed up. And then ruby would be ones that might be, you know, okay, but not as good as diamond and then emerald are the ones that 
pretty much sign up everyone and you can just get onboarded and they all have some value right in the beginning it's difficult to get diamond suppliers enrolled because you don't have any track record uh, but you can really work with the ruby and emerald and maximize there and then over time get onboarded by those diamond suppliers and some markets uh, they're really under competitive and a lot of people are not advertising uh, so you can even get diamond suppliers immediately this is definitely possible and happens quite frequently uh, because some markets are um, the manufacturers keep in mind the ones developing these products they're not uh, expert marketers they're manufacturers they're experts in creating the product they want to make the best product possible so they're not always uh, super efficient at sales or especially e-commerce maybe they have a showroom or maybe they um, you know, do some outbound or take some inbound. They have maybe like a sales rep or something, but they're not doing what we're doing. A lot of them aren't even advertising online um, in some markets. So very interesting stuff. So we're going to determine whether what level they are. This is some, somewhat subjective, objective in the sense that a diamond, you know, you're going to know a diamond when you see one, but the other levels can be somewhat subjective as far as, oh, this one seems like it's a little bit easier, a little harder, or it really matches my niche perfectly. I want to get them onboarded. I mean, I have to this day for my main market, I have this exact sheet that I use as a reference, you know, even now. There's been like some suppliers that I didn't sign off for even two years. Uh, my first year or two in business, I reached out to them every six months. Like, hey, I, I, you know. I like and this is what you'll learn later on but I reached out to them multiple times and then eventually they was able to get them enrolled uh, so this is something that is um, the sheet is becomes almost a source document for the business of uh, different suppliers so this is a pretty important document I recommend you keep it hold on to it have it in a nice spot on your desktop or store it somewhere where you can easily access it uh, it kind of be it becomes kind of your partner uh, through this best part uh, phase one process so supplier name we're gonna we're gonna put life fitness. We're gonna do supplier website. Where'd it go? So life fitness. Not they even have a commercial use. So we'll just do life fitness. Right now we haven't really dug deep at all, so we're just kind of doing basic information. Uh, let's see if we can just grab a phone number. Let's see if they even have one. So we have a 100, 1-800 number. Okay, not, not a big deal. You'll notice they even have a distributor. So this is interesting. That means that they're kind of, you know, they're, do, they're doing something with distributors. So they have some process. You'll even see that like some people, some major companies will even have like a submit to be a reseller on their bottom here. So that's even, you know, if you see that, that's even, that's even great because you know that they're definitely dropship friendly or willing to work with resellers. So supplier email, I don't know if they have an email here. Uh, we'll skip that one. You know, kind of want to get like a person's email. You know, we're not really going to be emailing general customer service that much. Just the only reason we would is when we're trying to figure out, okay, who is the decision maker? Who's the person who actually onboards new vendors? So we got to figure that part out. We might have like, a, we might email a general email, um, but we'll probably end up, uh, most of it's calling. We really just want to call because we can get an answer to something immediately and follow up on it rather than, hey, oh, this one gets transferred to that person, that person, you wait three, a week or two. You know, we want to get started now. We want to get these products, get onboarded, get everything uploaded. We have a lot of work to do in phase two, three, and four. So we want to just get these people, uh, you know, agreeing to work with us for the, as soon as possible. So we want to just find the person that we can get on the phone have a conversation, show them that we're the real deal, and we have a script on how to kind of get onboarded, uh, and then move from there. And I would consider these guys a, a diamond level. I mean, Life Fitness is a big company, they're huge. Uh, everyone's probably known about them. Um, so we have that. So that's number one, so let's go back. So we're gonna do another one. We're, and we get, we're pulling this right off the competitor's website, guys. Do you see this? Stairmaster, who doesn't know who Stairmaster is, right? So we got Stairmaster. Okay, Stair. So we got this one again. Stairmaster um, treadmill, right? That wasn't elliptical, was it? It looked kind of weird. Oh, look. a stair Stairmaster treadmill. Is that really a thing? 
It's interesting they have that in the treadmill section, but it's a Stairmaster. Either way, that's fine. So we, we want to find like Stairmaster's website. Here. Right. Again, we want to go directly to the manufacturer, so we're trying to find their yeah, this seems like it's their their direct stair master step mills. No, this is authorized dealer. Yeah, so this is someone who's reselling the products. Interesting idea for a website. But we want to find the brand here. Not core half and half, treadmill outlet. Let's just see. Maybe just like stairmaster.com. Oh, stairmaster.com, there it is. So we want to, we're just trying to get as close to the source as possible. Great. Okay, so this is what we want. Stair core half product stairmaster. Interesting. Oh, so maybe they, they sell Oh, they own multiple brands. So that means that if we got onboarded with them to sell their products, then we would be able to get, you know, multiple brands on here because they have different products. You know, like cardio, exercise, uh, treadmills. Mm-hmm, great. So that, this is just a great example. Oh, but this is, they're selling multiple brands here. Look at them, they're great marketing. So this actually isn't the brand name. This actually isn't the brand. This is just another person reselling multiple products, but look how convincing their site is. Fantastic. Let's see if we can dig into this a little bit deeper. This is a long training, but I think it's valuable for people. Stair Master Manufacturer. So four, four decades. So I guess that is them, but maybe they maybe they just have all of their brands on the website. But this is research in, in real time, guys. You can see, like, this is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm doing. I'm just learning. People get, sometimes can be too, um, how do you say, they can be too focused on, you know, just they give up so easily, right? So in this case, we just want to get, you know, figure out who are, so I guess this could be a brand. I don't want to move on any. F I think that perhaps the way they position it is all f four, five, six. All six of these are owned by this brand, and Stairmaster is one of them. Even though most people just know Stairmaster, Schwinn's like bicycles, Nautilus, like Star Trek. Look, these are even some of the other brands on that website. So it seems like this is another vendor um, that has a lot of different, a lot of different products. So I have the phone number here. I bet they even have something about like becoming a vendor or something. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if they had something like that here on the site. I'd probably check out their Facebook page. You know, I'd look deeper into them. You know, I, you can do that. But it's gonna have me log in. I'm on incognito now. But you want to go into and just see all these different things. So contact support. Let's see if we can uh, sc scrape their phone number. If they have a number here. No, I don't see any any phone number because they're going to have a lot of different departments. It's a big company, right? So what I want to do uh, is I want to find out. And another example, guys, like when we're talking with manufacturers directly, and you look at their About Us page, check it out. They are shipping in from China, which I don't really like that much. I prefer if we have like Americans making products with American quality goods. Uh, but you know, some some markets, this is just the way they do things. Um, so, but you can notice how they're kind of pushing their manufacturing and they're, they're pushing their warehouse. This is, a, this is a good indication of something. Oh, they are a manufacturer because they're showing their warehouse or showing the location on their About Us page. So we have, um, you know, different brands. You know, I, I would have to really dig deeper into this to learn about this particular one. So we're not going to leave, we're not going to put a phone number for now. We have a website. It seems good enough. Uh, we can dig deeper when we're actually doing our outreach to onboard vendors. And they, they're they really, I mean, I would call them Diamond as well. I mean, who hasn't heard of Stairmaster? Maybe young children, but they used to be all over the place. They were really, really popular. Um, and they're still a big brand to this day. So again, I'm not filling out every box. I'm just going through, I'm just accumulating kind of basic data of what I can find. Um, so we, we had this other website here. Uh, matrix treadmills 
and you see that I'm recording everything I've thought, not travels, treadmills. Here we go. So, matrix treadmills here. Matrix Home Fitness. This is probably a better example of an obvious manufacturer. So we can see they, the matrix. So let's, let's find your facility, find a store. This is a manufacturer, right? They have a physical location, maybe a storefront. Um, let's keep scrolling down, go to their About Us page. They are a manufacturer. They have equipment in these gyms. They're promoting their brand. They're promoting their their products, right? They're not really selling a whole bunch of different products from different brands. So that's how we can easily identify like whether or not. Uh, in the previous case, I think Stair Stairmaster they have many many different brands that they own. In this case, this is a smaller company. They just sell this one matrix treadmill. So they're oh, if you were the owner of this treadmill brand and you made this. Uh, you'd want to sell it as, to as many people as possible if you believe in, in your product. So it's really... Oh, the recording is still going. Okay, very good. I, th I only saw the time there. So what we're noticing is we're making a list of all these different brands. So again, we're going back. We got the website here for Matrix. And this one it should probably, I think, would be easier to get their phone number. Usually a smaller manufacturer is going to put that information uh, right up front. Here it is. So I'm going to copy their phone number. And I'm just making a source document that I'm going to reference. Okay, so we have this. Supplier email. Mm, they just have this box here. Okay, great. So th again, I'm going through. And these guys seem more, you know, I've never heard of Matrix, but they do, They but... I noticed on their website that they do have like a few treadmills in kind of major things like Planet Fitness and or like any, Anytime Fitness and all these different Gold's Gym, major, major brands. So I would consider them probably a Ruby level. I mean, they're not Diamond because I've never heard of them. I mean, again, this is somewhat subjective, right? If I've heard of them, I call them Diamond, but it seems like they're a pretty big player in the treadmill space, but they may not be as big as Life Fitness or uh, Stairmaster or some of the brands that have, you know, multi-decade long recognition. So we're just making this entire list. So once we've dug deep and we've identified in the previous document, okay, we have all these different niche ideas. We're going to bring those down, bring those down, scale them down, scale them down, take off the ones that aren't, that don't work, that don't match all the requirements. And we're going to end up with, you know, one kind of customer avatar who's interested in one space. Uh, one particular product kind of category that also could appeal to three or four other categories which also have some search volume. So uh, one thing I, I think I didn't do, but it's not nece nece necessary, but just wanted to touch on is that when we're talking about uh, SCM Rush and we're talking about all the different uh, competitor um, uh, products, for example, like Fire Pit also goes along, not competitor products, complementary products. Like Fire Pit also has this product or that product, which is similar. Uh, we had the outdoor furniture, we had the outdoor heaters, we had all these different complementary products. I also want to do this SEM research for those complementary products. Like, for example, in the treadmill space, it's going to be like recumbent bikes, upright bicycles, um, you know, just spinning bikes, you know. Um, also uh, rowers, these are all things which are complementary to the treadmill and also appeal to the same customer avatar. So we've seen, I mean, I've given you 10, 20 examples of different websites and different brands and how they're selling these different products in different niches. So this is plenty of information in order for you to dial in and figure out what niche that you want to begin. So this is the completion of the market research. What you want to do is you want to, to be fully completed with the market research portion. You want to have at least 15 to 25 suppliers listed here. Now later, this information is going to be super valuable. So try to get as much data as you can. Don't worry about their email if it's not on the site. Don't, you know, don't dig so deep for the phone number. You know, this is just, we want to, what's really important, I, I would say, is the supplier name, the website, and whether they're Diamond Ruby. Like, you want to know if they're really high level or kind of mid-tier. Now, 
and the phone number is good if you can have it, but you can, you know, if you have the link to the website, you can get that easily. But what we want is we want to have probably, you know, somewhere like here, 15 to 20 different manu uh, possible manufacturers that we could work with. And be broad. Let's say, for example, they sell some expensive treadmills, but also some cheaper treadmills. Just throw them on there. Right now, we want to just get, we're casting a wide net. And we just want to put everything that's in this product category that we can find that could possibly be partners and vendors that we work with. And we've already identified that they are dropship friendly. And the way we've done that is by going to other competitors, identifying what brands they're selling, and then using that as a reference point. Now there are alternative strategies. For example, you could go to Google, you could just type in, you know, you could just go directly to the, the PLAs and then I could just go here and I could just look for, you know, but if it's not a nationwide brand, you don't want that. But online, you know, if there, there could be some manufacturers who are advertising in this space, I don't see it very often, right? So, you know, you're really going to see sites more like this, indoor cyclery. It's like people that are trying to create a site like this uh, and they're trying to figure it out. Most people don't already have it figured out like I do and I've done. You know, this system and this process has generated millions of dollars. I've generated millions of dollars in revenue uh, by having these storefronts. So this would be an example of what you're commonly, you're going to see more frequently than not. So Proform, we can see they're selling the different bikes, cardio equipment, uh, bike accessories, and then boom, how brands right here. So here's all the brands. This is a list. So I can just go down this list and then I can just go and I'll fill out this entire sheet with all these brands right here so this research is very easy it's not um, difficult it's very simple it's critical that it gets done this is the best part because you're setting the foundation for your business to grow so if you try to you know build a house on um, like a swamp it's probably gonna sink right but if you build it on a rock a uh, massive rock like Manhattan, then you could put an entire city on top of it and it's gonna stand firm. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to build this really strong foundation with our research in order to get an idea for the marketplace. So before we've even done any like actual creation, we already know exactly what we're getting into. Um, and this allows us also to get a slight benefit of like free trials and stuff. So if you already know what you want to do, then when you set up the accounts, you can start working immediately. Um, so I wouldn't set up any accounts or anything yet. We're just figuring out what marketplace we're getting into. Um, and then I'll do like another review video under this quick, you know, review, uh, just encapsulating phase one. But once you've gotten to this sheet, once you've made it through the entire process and you have 15 to 25 different suppliers uh, and, and some preliminary information about them, you're ready to move on to phase two. I mean, you've done the research, you've decided on a niche, you've figured out what you want to get into, uh, you've identified that there are some, you know, you've, you've gotten all the basic data that you can get. Now, can you get better? Yeah, you can always learn more, you can always get better, but you know, uh, it's not necessary in order to move to phase two. You just need to get this sheet completed with 15 to 25 suppliers and have a, um, a completed previous sheet that kind of made sure that everything was marked yes in the um, previous uh, niche research selection. You just wanna make sure that all those are marked yes, you figured out which one you wanted to get into, make sure SEM rush, all the search volume's good, and then fill out this supplier name worksheet. So I'll uh, conclude this. this is the longest part of the research so far. So I'll conclude this video and we'll end phase one with another video following up, just doing a final review and introducing um, phase two. So congratulations on making it this far. Um, you know, you've done something. Uh, just keep in mind that most people have gotten this, you know, somewhat of this far. So a lot of people, they say, oh, I, you know, I, it's hard to find a niche, and that's where they stop, or they have some basic idea, and, you know, then it's not a matter of what you've learned. It's a matter of how you execute on the action steps that are given. So execution is going to play a major role moving forward. So this beginning part is a lot of kind of, you know, research, learning, education, 
and moving forward, we're going to be doing a lot of action steps, and we're going to be taking uh, massive action in order to garnish massive results. Um, there is a um, there is a, a a concept of from Tony Robbins. This is the first time I saw this, and he has like a whole video on it on explaining it. Maybe I'll include this below just for your own personal reference. But he talks about. Uh, really just how beliefs are created and you know every the basic premise is everyone has uh, you can imagine like four four blocks and everyone has in the top left block you know you can imagine four blocks uh, set up like next to each other with some space in the middle so uh, there is in the top left block there is uh, kind of our potential and everyone has unlimited potential right and then to the right of that, so an arrow pointing right to the next block, um, is um, our beliefs. So this is like what we believe to be true and what's possible. And then underneath of that, uh, we have our action. And our action is based on our beliefs. So how we believe this or that will determine our action. Uh, to the left of that, so we're moving in a... Uh, clockwise pattern so an arrow pointing to the, the left is going to be um, our results our results are a direct relation of our actions and our results an arrow pointing back up to potential um, kind of justify kind of our results will um, kind of breed back into that potential so we this is kind of how beliefs are created and how thinking is done so what I'm trying to get across is the pattern of positive mental thinking or negative mental thinking. And what happens is people who have a positive uh, mental belief system, so they believe it's possible, uh, they're going to take massive action because they're bought in to the idea of being able to take action. They understand uh, what they're doing and how the big picture relates to the action steps they're taking. So because they're have this strong belief they naturally take massive action and guess what they get massive results which feeds back into their potential and which reinforces their belief so their belief gets even stronger their actions be continue to remain massive and their results continue to remain massive as well so you can see this is an upward spiral pattern whereas your uh results come in, your belief becomes stronger, and you take more action, leading to more results, and it can go that way. The opposite is also true if you take it on a downward spiral. So some people who have a limited belief, or they don't believe something is possible, then they take a, a tiny amount of action, and they get a tiny result. And that feeds back in, and they still have potential, but that feeds back into their uh, belief, oh, I told you it wasn't possible, or I told you I couldn't do it, then that belief becomes even downward again. It reinforces that negative belief. They take even less action, get even less results, and so forth. So bear in mind, throughout this process, you want to take massive action. And the best way to do that is to have massive belief. This process, this system, has benefited so many people in order to become uh, online entrepreneurs, solo entrepreneurs, just being able to change their lives. So please, uh, if at this point, if you're unsure about how to move forward, or if you're having some difficulties, reach out, uh, contact me directly, and make sure that you know exactly what niche you want to get into. If you want a second set of eyes on it, if you're not sure, uh, myself or one of our coaches will show you exactly and confirm for you everything that you've learned up until this point. So with that being said, uh, we've completed phase one. We'll do a quick review video after this, and then we're going to hop, skip, and jump all the way over to phase two. Congratulations, and see you soon.